It started with a virus, a damn virus that tore my life apart. Mrs. Polanski, there's a 50% chance your husband won't make it. That's what the doctor said to me, word for word, verbatim. Minutes before, they rushed Shua into an eight hour emergency heart surgery. That was the last time I saw Shua conscious. Within seconds, my perfect, happy life crashed. And I dove into a downward spiral of uncontrollable anxiety and panic induced by doctor's words that I couldn't understand or even accept. How was I supposed to comprehend that my husband, who was perfectly fine three days before, was fighting for his life? How was I supposed to understand that there was a chance that Shua might not come home? When the doctor came out, of the surgery and told us that Shua had made it. I remember my shaking body instinctively running to go give him a hug, but it wasn't reciprocated. Mrs. Polanski, your husband is very, very sick. I know, I know he is, but he, he's gonna be fine. He's gonna be fine. <clears throat> Mrs. Polanski, I don't think you understand. A virus has attacked your husband's heart. His body is not working. There's no magical cure. We're gonna do our best to support him, but he needs to fight back. No. The hospital became our unsolicited home for three weeks. Day became night and night became day. Most people don't survive longer than 24 hours with what Shua had. But he didn't give up. He kept on fighting. Every single day, whatever they said, he kept on going. At the time, I was four months pregnant and I had lost almost 30 pounds from the stress. I said to them, I think you've made a really big mistake. You don't actually know who this patient is. He's not a regular patient. This patient has two baby girls at home waiting every day for their daddy to come back. This patient has studied for nine years and is weeks away from getting his doctorate in psychology. He's going to be the best psychologist the world has ever seen. And this patient, he's my everything. And he's coming home. The nightmare that was the hospital didn't end the way that we believed it would end the way we had the world believe it would end. My visions of Shua dancing out of the hospital with thousands of people were replaced with visions of a mom holding her seven-year-old daughter, holding her for hours while she cried and begged for her daddy to come home. Mommy, you promised me. I'm sorry, Emanuela. I couldn't keep my promise. <laughs> my husband died and I lost the love of my life. Every day since Shu has been gone, I battle with my mind not to take me back to the hospital where he spent the last three weeks fighting for his life. But tonight, I don't want to talk about death. I want to talk about life because I need to live. 
I would love to share with you one of my favorite Shua memories. Most of you wouldn't know this about Shua, but man, did he own the stage. I wish you all would have seen him. He would walk on in front of an audience, people he didn't know, anyone. And he had this confident humility about him that you couldn't take your eyes off. He had poise and he had grace, but he had swagger, <laughs> complete swagger. But what stood out with Shua more than anything was his ability to connect with people. I was so proud of him, always so proud to watch him speak. And at home, we would talk about our dreams and the future. And I would stand with him and I would hold his face in my hands. And I would say with such conviction, I would say, Shu, I don't know how and I don't know when, but I promise you, you are going to go around the world speaking one day. And I believed it. It's taken millions and millions of nightmarish, agonizing seconds for a little voice, a little light inside that I thought was extinguished to make its way up and say, Simi, please, you have to let me out. I know you're hurting and I know you're in pain, but I need to come out. A few weeks ago when I sat down to write this speech, I asked myself, Simi, what does it mean to live? I've been listening to this little voice a little bit every day. Living means that I will give myself a chance even though I'm in pain. Living means knowing that I will love Shua for the rest of my life and nothing will take that away from me. Living means that I will utilize my talents and my potential to their fullest because it redefines what purpose means to me every single day. Living means that I will hold on to the faith that one day I will love and be loved again. And living means that right now on this stage, I will try and understand what it means to be so broken and so whole at the same time. You know, if God Himself would have come to me when Shua died and said to me, you know, Simi, you're gonna live. You're gonna talk about Shua and you're gonna tell your story. I wouldn't have believed him because there was no way that I could survive this world without him. But tonight I'm here and I'm humbled to share my journey with you because sharing it gives me the fire and the fuel to fight for life even one more day. And I hope if I can even give one person that fire to fight and grab their life for even just one more day, then that's my gift that I can share. And now she was right here and he's holding my face in his hands. And he's saying, Sim, I know it's hard, but you are going to go around the world speaking one day.